The last talk for today uh, will be given by uh, Professor Mohamed Zaki from Rensala Polytechnic Institute. His research focuses on uh, data mining and machine learning with applications in text mining, bioinformatics, and personalized health. Um, we're looking forward to your talk. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to be here. Um, so yes, um, I'm going to be talking about our work in this HEALS project that we started about two years back. So HEALS actually stands for, you know, it's a nice acronym, uh, Health Empowerment by Analytics, Learning, and Semantics. It's a very large uh, project. It's part of this uh, thing called the IBM AI Horizons Network. Um, and I'm talking about you know, a particular uh, aspect of the kind of work we're doing within that. Um, so you'll see um, you know, what, we, what we are dealing with. So the, the, the context here is that you know, we, would like to help, you know, we would like to help people uh, be healthy. Okay? So make good choices about food, uh, you know, get good exercise, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and if you think about that, right, from the point of view of personal health, from, you know, and I'm not talking about the clinical side, sort of more on the personal, you know, fitness and wellness side of things. Uh, the idea is that, you know, there's a lot of information out there. You know, there, obviously you have these websites like WebMD and, you know, uh, many other things that when you Google for things, the problem is there's a lot of information, but it's not really personalized to your query, right? So, I mean, I'm sure many of us, you know, we query for a term, uh, and there's also this danger of, you know, Dr. Google, you know, where you kind of read all these symptoms and you get scared, you know, do I have this really, you know, <laughs> really terrible thing because, you know, you just have this minor ear pain, for example. But anyway, the point is that, you know, there's a lot of information and your specific uh, query may not really be answerable, you know, to the extent that you want it, you know, using the current tools. Uh, so because, you know, you have your unique context, uh, your experiences, your past, you know, what are you really looking for, your health conditions. And so generic search is not going to do it. And the idea is that, you know, can we actually personalize those kinds of uh, uh, things for the, for the health users, right? Uh, our, you know, just to kind of ground our work, we said, okay, let's focus on someone who you know, doesn't really have any disease as such, but they have, maybe, you know, they have a family history of diabetes, so they might be prone to that, or, you know, they might have slightly elevated levels of sugar or, you know, something else, you know, triglycerides and so on. But anyway, the point is that if we can, you know, so this is our, just the context that, um, let's say there's a person, right? This person wants to be healthy, right? We all want to be healthy. Um, and the idea is that, you know, how can we help such a person, you know, like I said, get good exercise, eat healthy, and, you know, remain, uh, 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 remain healthy. So that's the, that's the context in which we're going to be kind of talking about some of the techniques that I'm uh, going to be describing. So what are the challenges? The, uh, there really, you know, there are many things, but there are four things that you can list out. So one is, as I already pointed out, the data is heterogeneous, so a lot of information out there in lots of different formats. Uh, the other problem is that is the data really current, right? So the information that I'm looking for, is it, let's say, from, you know, uh, opinion from, you know, five years back, or is it, you know, from the current understanding of a particular condition? Uh, and then, of course, you know, I have unique needs, uh, and I'm, when I query for something, am I getting what I really, you know, what I'm you know, really querying for? And, and then the thing that, that if you just look at the raw information, right, you, there is this also the notion of interpretation. That is, even if I have, you know, I'm collecting all my heart rate, my step count, you know, my food log, that I'm a really good food logger, you know, but how do I understand my data, right? Uh, there's a lot of data out there, and, and I need to make sense of that. So in that context, I'm going to be describing two pieces of work. Uh, there we have many more things going on, but I just wanted to sort of see that the theme is, remember, it's learning and semantics. Okay? So we want to actually endow machine learning with more than just the deep architectures uh, with actual you know, semantic information, so with knowledge graphs and you know, ontologies and, and concepts. And so the, the, the interesting thing here is that how do you combine Right, machine learning with semantics. So that's one. You'll see that that is one of the big themes that we are trying to uh, we are trying to pursue. 
So in that, in that spirit, the first thing we said is that if you want to encourage people to eat healthy, you know, we need to obviously collect uh, information about food. And, and Sergey you know, pointed out uh, the work that he's done on the th food images. We are looking at it from more on the, you know, the ingredients and how you make things and you know, how do you eat more healthy. And so we said, let's build this comprehensive food knowledge graph, okay? And I'll just quickly walk through you know, what we've done in that, uh, in that space. So that's the first project. And then I'll talk something about you know, understanding your personal data, uh, like fitness data. So food KG, right? So our goal is to do food recommendations. So you know, I've got a set of ingredients in my fridge. I want to make something for dinner. And I'd rather make something healthy versus something you know, that has more carbs and more sugar and more salt. Right? Uh, so what are the challenges? Well, there are resources, again, you know, food is such a, such a common thing that you know, obviously a lot of people are interested. There's a lot of recipe sites out there. But it's not really organized in a manner that you can actually you know, uh, kind of pull these things together and start making these kinds of recommendations for healthy uh, alternatives. And so, there's, uh, so what we need to do is we need to collect recipes. We need to collect nutrition. Uh, there's obviously, you know, if you look at the American Diabetes Association, right, there are guidelines that, uh, that they would recommend. So how do you bring all these things together, right? There's all scattered information, so that has all to be, you know, put together. Then on top of that, you've got your personal preferences, likes, dislikes, allergies, obviously, you want to avoid, right? So all that is a personal knowledge graph. So we also have to actually embody the person's context in something called a personal knowledge graph, which is something we're working on as well. So the food KG is focused on food. It brings, like I said, all these recipes, nutrition, food taxonomies together. We actually link between these different, uh, different uh, things so that you can actually follow through and figure out you know, uh, how much you know, of uh, I know, fiber does a particular you know, ingredient have or the particular recipe has. And then we also want to keep things you know, uh, like provenance is a big thing. So we want to make sure that whatever we have, we have enough markup to, to, to give us um, where we got that information from. So, so the kind of questions that, you know, so again, these the are just a few sampling of the things that we might want to be doing. For example, someone says, uh, you know, just want to know, okay, chocolate cake, okay, what does it have? Uh, what's the calorie count? And so you would like the system to be able to answer things like that. But then the next question would be, you know, um, what's the sugar content of this? Because I want to control that. Or, or maybe I say, okay, I'd, you know, I'd like to substitute one of the ingredients for, you know, supposing I'm lactose intolerant, for example then what can I substitute to make that same recipe? So, so those are the kinds of you know, follow-on questions that we would like to encourage uh, the system to be able to answer. So the food KG, just quickly, uh, what we have done is we have taken this data set called the Recipe 1M. It's, uh, it's a bunch of people from MIT, from QCRI, uh, that actually looked at. So they also collect images, by the way. But nevertheless, we are focusing on the text part, which is the recipe, the ingredients, and the steps for making those recipes. So they, had, they collected a million recipes, but they're all you know, just textual format. So they're not so just unstructured text. So we said we're going to link them up with the USDA nutrient information. We're going to add on top of that a food ontology so that we get a nice organization of the different ingredients and so on. And right now, what we have is, I believe, the largest collection of, you know, in a sort of a knowledge graph format. Uh, it has about 67 million. Uh, you know, triples or facts or, you know, these relations and entities that, that connect the different recipes together with the nutrients and so on and so forth. So that's, uh, that's the food KG that we, have, that we have built. I'm going to, you know, obviously you can imagine there's a lot of uh, steps you have to do to actually start linking things, right? Uh, the names are not the same, the units are not the same, uh, you have to align concepts across ontology, across knowledge graphs and so on. I'm going to skip all that, you know, that's all there's research to be done in that, but I'm going to, you know, in the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, but I just want to at least focus on, like, what that enables. Okay, so what that enables is this uh, a system uh, for actual query answering over you know, on top of the food knowledge graph. So the idea is that can the knowledge graph, you know, lead to better answers than you know a generic query that you might do on Google. Uh, so the, you know, again, this is you can think of this as work in progress. So right now we can do three types, and we're focusing on three types of question, and, and we want to add more and more constraints. So the first thing is just like factual questions. Okay, how much sugar, how much fiber does something have? The second is a comparison, right? Does this have more of, you know, more saturated fat than that? Okay, so the comparison type of questions. And then the third is, 
you know, can you suggest recipes that uh, you know, uh, there are certain ingredients that I have and I want to make a certain, you know, healthy recipe? And I also want to take into account, con you know, uh, constraints like allergies, uh, likes and dislikes, you know, those kinds of questions are the third type of questions. So we have a system up and running. You can actually go and download the code, the, the actual knowledge graph if you want. It's the foodkg.github.io. It's actually going to be presented in the international, you know, semantic web conference, uh, like, uh, in, in a couple of weeks in, uh, uh, in Auckland. So as I said, you know, you can query things like it's a factual question, you know, how much salt, uh, sorry, how much saturated fat is there in butter, uh, you know, uh, which has more uh, a fat, butter or olive oil, you know. So again, these are like simple type of questions, but then the third one is, you know, let's say which Indian dishes have uh, chicken, onion, and garlic. And you can add, you know, negations as well. You can say, and it should not contain something else. So it'll give you a ranked list of that. The idea is to actually link this with your health guidelines. You know? so, so you have to control your, let's say, total daily calorie count. I know what you had for breakfast. I know, I know what you had for lunch. You know, now when I want to recommend this, we want to resort these things based on right, your allowance for the day, for, for, you know, for example. So that's an example of the kind of things we can do with, you know, once you have this kind of semantic uh, knowledge graph in place. All right, so that's one piece. The second piece that I'm going to talk about is uh, you know generating explanations from your own personal health data. So you know obviously I collect you know my step counts, my you know sleep patterns, my you know heart rate, and so on. Uh, maybe and I'm not that good at food logging, but you know other people might be better at that. But the idea that if you did have that, you know what can you do with it? How can you explain that information to a user? So so this is obviously you know it kind of it goes into the the field of explaining. You know, there's of course, you know, the explainable AI where you're talking, you're talking about, you know, can I explain what the model is doing and how it's coming to the recommendations and, you know, the decisions it's making. Actually, what we are talking about is even, you know, more basic than that. Can you explain the data to me in the first place, right? So what's happening in my data? Forget the model, you know, model can come even later. So how do I explain these time series personal health data? Uh, and that's what we're focused uh, on. So as an example, right, so you see this chart here, uh, it's, uh, it's actually, uh, a, a real user's food calorie intake data for about uh, six months, right? So you can see the x-axis is the number of days, is like daily calorie intake. So, you know, this person has a, you know, a consumption behavior, whatever that is. The idea is that on the right-hand side, what you're seeing is uh, the system that we have in place right now, it can generate summaries that are in natural language, okay? And it's based on mining that data extracting patterns, extracting behaviors, and then you know, turning those into natural language explanations of what's happening in your data. And so you, know, you can see some simple things like on most of the days, like the first one, right? So most of the days in the past week, you did not reach your goal to keep your calorie intake low. So there is, in this case, we, you know, there is some sort of a goal this user is trying to, to satisfy, and they're not able to you know, achieve that. If you look at sort of the uh, the fourth row, the, the weekday if-then pattern. So we can do a pattern like this, that whenever your intake is very high on a Sunday, right, it tends to be low the next Monday. So what this, uh, so, so it looks like, you know, this user, you know, they kind of binge or maybe they eat too much on, on the weekend, but then on Monday they realize that they need to kind of keep things in you know, control, or maybe they work or maybe they're busy, whatever the reason might be, we don't know, but they don't have that much a calorie intake for that one. And then the last row, I just, you know, just to point another type of pattern, you can say, we do a pattern mining and we can do a better job with the actual, you know, text here. But this was, this last week, okay, uh, you had a certain pattern, okay? This was high intake, moderate, high, moderate, high, very high. So, I, I, you know, it's not that, uh, so the idea is that we can improve that part. But then the thing is that it says that on half of the weeks like this in the past, okay, your intake actually rose the next week. So this actually tells you that if you have a certain type of a behavioral pattern, it tends to kind of, you know, repeat. And, and we can actually detect that from the data and we can at least show to the user that this is what's happening. As I said, there's more, a lot of scope for improvement, but, but that's our, the, our, our task is to, to, to kind of explain these things. How do we do this? Well, the idea is sort of, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination of linguistic summarization with pattern mining and then you know, ranking of the alternative explanation that we can have for the data. I'm not gonna go into the technical details. Um, you know, we can talk offline if you're interested in that. But it's basically you know, based on templatized expressions, but we need to fill in the right blanks, if you will. All right, so I'm gonna skip ahead, and so just 
Um, you know, obviously everyone knows personalization is extremely hard, whether it's for health or whether it's for, you know, recommendation on Amazon or other things, because there's so many different aspects, right? So you can talk about your socio-demographic information, your genetic, you know, markers, your social, you know, your barriers, your, your prior experience, and so on and so forth. So, so we, we realize this is an extremely challenging thing, but our, you know, current work is actually focused on building a personal knowledge graph trying to elicit, you know, implicitly or explicitly as much of this as we can. And then, um, you know, here are some of the things that we're doing here, uh, which is, again, uh, bringing back to the, the four points that I mentioned in the beginning. You need to have heterogeneous data that you want to encapsulate in the knowledge graph, okay, derive personalized insights from that, explain things to the user, um, and, you know, recommend healthy food and activities. And I'm just going to stop at this slide, which is sort of our vision for things is that we're also building this chatbot, which I haven't really talked about, where, you know, everything has to be natural. You know, the, the ideal situation would be you would like to have a personal health assistant that's helping you make these healthy, you know, health decisions. And so the semantics, so again, the big idea I want to sort of, that you to take away from this talk is what we're doing is to bring in the world of deep learning, you know, machine learning, data mining. Uh, and combining that with semantics, okay, so to really put meaning inside all of these uh, methods. So I'll stop right there. Thank you.